Hello and welcome to lesson 13 of Software Design and Development for Higher Computing Science. Today we're looking at Modulus. Now if we go to the Wikipedia page for Modulus, you'll see there are lots of things that Modulus refers to. The one we're after is the Modulo operator in various programming languages. Now if you scroll down, you'll see lots of uh, examples of what it is. But what we're really talking about is modular arithmetic. That's what it's all about. So you can see the applications of modular arithmetic. This is where you would use it in real life. You know, when you do maths and you say, when would I ever use this? Well, here are the examples of when you would use modular arithmetic. Now, you might be thinking, what is it? Well, if we go to this maths is fun page, which I highly recommend, you'll see that uh, there's a little reminder of what we used to do in primary school. When, especially if you went to primary school in Scotland, you would have done division in this way. So when we want to divide a number by another number, sometimes it doesn't divide evenly. For example, if you've got two dogs, that's a very cat-like dog here. But if you've got two dogs, but you've got seven bones, and you want to divide the bones evenly, seven divided by two, it's not a whole number. We're going to have three per dog with remainder one, one remainder. Now this remainder here, that's what modulus finds. If I were to do seven modulus two, we would get the answer one because that's how many remainders there are when we divide seven by two. So let's take a look at that in programming. Now in Python, the modulus operator is the percent sign. So if I have an answer, which is seven modulus two, and I print the answer, what do you think we'll get? We get one because seven divided by two gives us a remainder of one. And we can do many, many tests of this. If we take any number like this, this is going to give us a remainder one. Do you know how I know that? Because when you divide something by two, you're pretty much finding out if it's even or not. If it's not even, if it's an odd number, you'll have one remainder. If it's an even number, you'll have no remainders. Not bad, eh? Let's do another example. Let's say you've got 21 slices of cake and there are seven people. Is it going to divide evenly between everyone? Yes, it is, because there are no remaining slices. All right, so these are terrible examples. When would you really use modulus in a computer program? Well, as you can see here, there are lots of applications of it. One of the most common applications is in encryption. It's very complicated, so I'm not going to bore you with it. But let's take a look at a couple of other ways. One of the ways we can use modulus is to give us uh, updates on our progress. You ever seen a loading bar? I've seen loads of those, and they are just updates on progress. Now, I've got a file here called numbers.txt, and it's in all caps because... As you can see, there are lots of numbers. How many? Too many for me to use my scroll wheel. Let's drag it down. Two million numbers. Took me quite a while to type these, but we've got two million numbers here. Now, if I come to this program, you'll see that we have a, an X variable, and it's just counting all of the lines in the file. And every time we loop around a line in the file, we're going to print X and add, well, we're going to add one to X and then print it. Now, if I comment this out, and then run it. You'll see it still takes a bit of time. Starting, getting the data, and then done. So that took about three or four seconds. If I print which line we're on, this is going to take much longer, and you'll see exactly how many times it has to print this. Look at this. We're at 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. So Python is still incredibly fast, but as soon as you start printing things, it takes exponentially longer to do that thing, to do it. So printing slows it down a huge amount. But obviously, if you're going to be waiting a long time, like imagine we had 2 billion lines of numbers, and these aren't completely unrealistic numbers, especially when you're getting into real complicated financial forecasting or weather forecasting uh, programs, you could definitely have billions of numbers, billions of pieces of data. And not only could you have that many numbers, but you could be doing very complicated things with those numbers. In this case, we're just printing them, and it's still taking ages. So what we can do is we can use modulus to not print out every single number, but to give us a bit of progress, we could only print out every, say, 10,000 numbers. So what we could do is, if x divided by 10,000 gives us zero remainders, meaning if the answer of x modulus 10,000 equals zero, then print x. So let's clear this and run it again, see how much faster it is. So it still takes a little bit of time, but it's way faster. But one problem with this, I suppose, is that we don't know how far through it we are just because it's saying 10,000, 20,000, all the way up to 2 million. We don't know that we're going, we don't know what percent complete we are. So let's try a bit of that. 
So I'm going to change this program so that we're not counting the number of lines here. But what this program is going to do is it's going to add up all of those numbers. Now we know there are 2 million numbers, but the program might not know that and then the number of numbers might change. So let's create a new function and it's going to take in all of those numbers, that array of numbers that we get from the first program. And I'm going to have a total that starts at zero. And for every number in numbers, the total will increase by that number and we will return the total. But of course, this is not telling us how far through the process we are. So what we can do is we can find how many numbers there are by finding the length of that array. So let's create a variable called numItems and it's going to be the length of the numbers array, meaning how many numbers there are. So it's going to be 2 million in this case, but it could have been any number depending on the length of this file, the size of the file. And let's create another variable that's going to count which line we're on. So we're going to start at zero, but each time around, we're going to add one to the counter. And then inside this loop, we can say if the counter divided by 10,000 gives us no remainders, then we can print our progress, just like we did in the previous program, but this time we're using however many numbers there are to find out how much of a percent through we are. And we can do that by finding how much percent complete we are by taking the line that we're on, dividing it by the number of lines, and multiplying that by 100. So that gives us the percent completion. And we just display that by printing it. Not bad. Now maybe displaying every half a percent is a bit overkill, so let's change this number here so it's every 100,000, so it's going to be every 5%. That's much better. And just ignore this 55% one, this is, a, this is a feature of programming languages when they can't accurately store floating point numbers. Um, it should just be 55. <laughs> So you can see a, a kind of a progress bar that we created by counting how far through the whole list we were and using modulus so we weren't printing every single piece of data of progress. We did it every 100,000 lines, which made it a much more staggered, more interval approach. So here we have a program. It's a program I just made. It's one of the best games ever programmed. We have a record called Champion, which stores a name, the attack damage and health that this champion has. We get the details of that champion from the user using this function and we'll create two champions, one to be our player and one to be the enemy. And then we will attack the enemy using this function here and while the enemy is still alive, we will keep attacking them, taking their health lower and lower. So let's give it a go. Let's say we are called Darius. We have 10 attack damage. We have 1,000 health, 10,000 health because I'm super healthy. Our enemy is called Zoe. She only has four attack damage and has 200 health. And you can see the program is very quick because Python is quick. And after the first attack, we deal 10 damage. Zoe now has 108 health. Second time, 10 damage, 108 health, and so on and so forth. But let's say that after every three attacks, Darius gains some attack damage. This is a cool feature that really hip and funky developers implement in games to make them really interesting every three attacks do something cool. So what we can do is we can keep track of the number of attacks that we've done starting from zero. And every time we attack the enemy, we'll just increase the number of attacks by one. But in the middle of this, after we damage the enemy, we'll check if attacks percent three is zero, meaning that when divided by three, the number of attacks gives us zero remainders, also meaning every three attacks, we want to set the player.attack damage to increase by, let's say it increases by five. Let's run it again. Darius starts with 10 attack damage, 2000 health. Can't remember if that was accurate, but whatever. Zoe starts with four attack damage, starts with 200 health. Now we kill her much more quickly and she's on minus 20 by the time we finish. The first time we dealt 10 damage, then we dealt 15 15, 15, then we did 20, 20, 20. So every three attacks, it's increasing by five. A very cool and interactive mechanic, I think you'll agree. So this is another situation where you could use modulus. And modulus is done using the percent symbol. Excellent. So there you have it. You have learned how to use modulus. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.